So I've committed to starting a new alias by the end of the year. So that's a new platform where I can release music that's not quite a fit for Mondo Loops, but it's still a sort of creative freedom that I want to explore. And I'm not 100% sure what the genre is going to be yet. So I've tried a sort of electronica, organic house vibe like this. which I plan on dropping somewhere eventually. Uh, but for now, I reckon a sort of upbeat hip hop, new jazz vibe would be a lot more in sync with the stuff I make now. So in this video, I'm gonna make a more upbeat sort of chill hop, upbeat hip hop style track. So I'll go through some recordings of me fleshing out the idea, and then I'll break down exactly where I get all the sounds from, all the drums, what keys I'm playing, stuff like that. And as always, there's gonna be a competition this week. So when I'm starting a new alias, I need some new sounds usually and where best to find them then splice so i'll be giving away a six month free splice membership uh so yeah all you gotta do to enter is drop a comment drop a like and be a subscriber of the channel and as soon as we hit just 200 likes i'll be giving that away in one of the upcoming videos so yeah i'm just gonna kick it off by playing some clips of me coming up with this new idea So I hope you liked the demo. I'm just gonna break down all of the stems now in the Ableton project file. Just go through the VSTs I use and where I got the sounds and stuff like that. I sort of got the idea for this track because it was absolutely roasting hot in the UK and I work in this studio, which is in the loft. So it was unbearably hot up here. So I thought why not try and make a nice summery tune to get my mind off the heat. So this is the project file and I've gone for a bit of a quiet stroll ambience for the ambient sounds. This is from my Dreamy Lo-Fi Hip Hop Volume 2 ambiences. It was just a field recording I took of some birds um, and I've laid in some violin there as well, which just gives you this nice sort of texture. I just thought the bird sounds just a nice summery vibe for the track. And I think I'm going to start off with the drums. So for the kick, I've used the ML Dusty Kick 1 because I like the sort of tight punchiness of it. But I've also layered in Woe Kick for this sort of crunchy top end. So this has got the lows cut as well as some of the highs. It just gives it a little bit more mid crunch on top of the dusty kick so the woe kick is actually from the count i don't know if you've heard of him but he's a really talented producer uh making sort of upbeat punchy hip-hop new jazz sounds and he's got some great drum kits and he just actually released one with Kiefer, who's another artist who i really like would recommend checking them out so the woe kick was from the count drums volume five texture of the woe kick and then i'll go into the highs and the mids so for the snares i use my usual sort of wooden percussive um sounds so ml lo-fi wood snarey sounds from the drum kit 
again from Dream Love for Hip Hop Volume 2. So that's the sort of main punch of the, of the snare. And then I've layered in some loops, which I think for this sort of music uh, just gives it the more groove and natural feel to it. So this is the snare that textures in. The main reason for this uh, was because of the little fill here. So I've got this snare and this hat combo. And these are from Ian Irwing's sample kit, uh, Timmy's kit volume two. So he's recorded loads of sort of live loops. So I think it was this, yeah, I think it was that bed stoy. Is that going to be study? Stoy, is that a word? I don't know. Maybe it is. Bed stoy. Uh, and I've just, so I've cut the hi hat just to make it a little bit more simple. This one's got a lot of sort of embellishments, which I didn't want so much of. So I just sliced it up to give it a more steady flow. But then I just kept the little fill at the end. So when you texture that with the snare, you just get the more full fill into the next bit. And then finally, I've added an extra layer of hi-hats. So these are vintage hats, uh, which are again from the count. I think it was volume one. You see, he's got these multi-sampled vintage hi-hat. And that's just what I used for that. Cut the highs a bit. It just fleshed out the, the hi-hat sounds. Um, and that's that. And then on the master, I've just got a tape emulation plugin. Uh, it's just a free Ableton rack from producer Elephant. If you've never heard of it, would recommend checking it out. That adds a little bit of wild flutter, drive, compression, slight bit of gain. And then I've added radiator for some more saturation. Uh, that's a saturator from Sound Toys. And then I've also got NeoVerb just to give it a little bit of a room uh, verb to it. So yeah, that's the drums together. And then if I go onto the auto filter, you can see I just cut the frequency here. So it tails the top end off as it goes into the drop bit. And then as we build back up, we uh, start to get some of the drums back in. And then you really come in towards the end and then boom, back in. And if you've never seen these curves, uh, if you hold option on a Mac, I assume it'll be control on a Windows, not 100% sure. Uh, but then you can get this little curve option so you can wiggle it around to your heart's content and get like a smoother flow up. So that's that. And then quickly onto the bass. What I've done here is I recorded the bass line as you saw in the, in the little video which was this, so it's a bit of a boppy. And then that sort of layers in with this trillion thing. And the reason I did that is because this is quite sort of, uh, sort of boppy and thin, but I wanted like a sub bass in between the gaps. So I recorded the same sort of bass line on trillion. And I used a uh, dark fretless on there and I've got a track spacer, which is ducking away the bass on the trillion when the bass I played on the guitar records. So that's just making sure it's not too clashy and too bass heavy. And then when it's not playing in between the gaps, it, this picks up again and fills in the gaps with some nice warm bass. Uh, so yeah, and then the bass is just the archetype Cory Wong with the P bass preset, yeah. And auto filter just cut the top end a little bit. That's the main boppy bass. So, so far, that's the track we've got. Just out onto the instrument bus. So I'll start from the top. The first thing I recorded was the electric piano keys. So I've got the Keyscape. And I've also got Tyna by Elementary Sounds. And I just like the top end. Sort of crunchiness of it. Blends really nicely with Keyscape. I've got a third one here. That's just Keyscape before I flattened it. So that's the MIDI. And then I actually put Soothe on there and just flattened it so I could have uh, the cleaner track as well as the MIDI if I want to change anything. So yeah, that's the first batch of keys. Um, and then what else have we got? So next up we layer in some vocals. The usual, I, I probably use too much by now, but it's just a nice soft subtle pad. It's not like too much. Uh, it just adds a bit of texture to track. So this is the Oliver Patrice Pool Project vocals. So I've got a I've basically got three different sort of vocal lines, um, as, oohs, ease, that sort of thing. Uh, I've panned one right, put one left. So it just gives it a little bit more stereo width. I've had to tweak the volumes a bit because some of the presets are louder than others. 
but yeah it just adds a nice little bit of a vocal pad to the track so that's pool project by oliver patrice uh, it's a spit for audio 30 dollar plugin i've also used portal on there just to give it a little bit of delay a little bit of a granular synth delay radiator for some saturation and spaced out for a nice ethereal reverb i'll drop all the links to all these plugins i talk about in the description as well if you want to check them out so yeah that's those and then arcade which i use a few times to add a bit of texture i just love arcade for final touches when you've got a track going you want a little bit a little more interesting sounds arcade works great so this you can see i've cut the lows and added a bit of convolution reverb onto this patch it's from the new uh downtime range lucky star preset you can see i automate this deep warp as we sort of travel through the track there and that makes it a little bit more choppy which leads nicely into the main sort of drop so that was just a nice little pad sound then we've got this sort of e piano top layer so that again i think was downtime again we've cut the low end a bit yeah catnip from downtime cut the low end added a bit of spaced out reverb so yeah that was catnip just in time uh, so that's a downtime plugin that has got some e piano lines i cut the low end added a bit of spaced out reverb and it just adds a nice little top layer to the track and then switch up the arcade when the drums drop out to a more sort of ethereal thing so this one is from what probably my favorite arcade range which is aura the angelic forest preset and this is like some ethereal pads which sound amazing just add such a cinematic depth to the track and you can also hear a sort of like pitched thing going on so that's this and this, if I unfreeze it, it's from a range of VSTs that I picked up recently. They've been on my list of things to buy for a long time. It's by Slate and Ash. I think they're a company based in Bristol. Um, they've got landform cycles and auras, which are sort of like cinematic pads. They've got some really cool sound design features um, and they just sound fantastic. I've barely scratched the surface of what's involved. Uh, if anyone's interested, I can make a video looking at them. Um, but yeah. That is where I got this pound, this sound from. So yeah, it's just a sort of pad sound which I pitched to give it this sort of like stretched vibe. But that's that. I, I've got this little run here um, on Tyna again that just fades into the drop when I get the drums out. You can hear it sort of sounds like it's got this ethereal sound. That's because if I move this with the modulation wheel, it adds the reverse and yarn textures to the sound. So that's the sound that you get. And that just goes on. So I use the volume just to fade out this track. And then I just, for convenience, freezed it. So next up was just a keyscape. Again, no pre no sort of effects on there, just a keyscape. Uh, whirl, it's a warm, whirly bit driven. I don't think I said that in the intro, actually. That's the same patch that I used on the keyscape chords. The warm, whirly bit driven. So yeah, it's just the top line melody. You might have heard it going a bit crazy then. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, I've got the guitar line, uh, which again, was my usual guitar rack with a bit of space down on the end. So I'm actually looking to switch up my guitar setup soon. Uh, I want to try out some of the like Helix or Kemper or, you know, uh, I think Archetype also do something like that. So we're going to check them out. Do let me know in the comments down below if you use any self. What's your favorite amp simulation? Have you got these pedals? I know. Strymon do one and stuff like that so we'd love to know what you think about that but yeah this is my usual guitar rack we're spaced out and that's it just a top line guitar melody now there's some effects going on on the master bus so these again are stuff that i've done a lot before uh i've just automated in the low end and i'm automating portal so the low end you can see here just cuts out the lows as we go towards the sort of drops i guess but it tucks it out and then it's a little bit more impactful when everything drops back in. You can also hear it going a bit crazy. That's because I've got Portal also being automated from the dry to wet. As we get towards these drops or these sort of risers. So I'm using, uh, I think it's called Dreamy Music Box preset. Which just gives it a little bit of a chaotic delay feel. Uh, and then yeah, that pretty much sums the track up. 
So let me know what you think of this. It was a bit of a new sound for me. Uh, I think if I launch a new alias, I'm going to take some inspiration from this, but it's not quite the sound I'm going for. I want it to be a little bit dark, a little bit more jazzy. But yeah, uh, it's great experimenting with new sounds just to figure out what I want to work on. Would love to know what you think of the track in the comments down below. Um, and yeah, I've got some really exciting stuff coming, some big competitions, some prizes, lots of stuff to get involved with. Uh, so yeah, please do hit the notification bell to be the first to hear about that. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.